Hi everyone, this is Jason Holland. I'm uh, the owner and travel butler with Travel Simplicity. I've loved to uh, be doing these conversations with so many of my friends around the world. And this morning, uh, I have the pleasure of introducing you to our one of our local travel butlers, Francesca. And um, we're gonna talk about something a little different today. So good morning. Good morning. I, um, what, what are we going to talk about today, Francesca? We're going to talk about this uh, very small island in the English Channel, which is English, but it's closer to France. And it's somewhere that not many people have really been to, but it's quite well known in certain areas. And why but, do you know this island? Well, that I, <laughs> I was kind of brought up here. <laughs> it's the place that I spent all my childhood but not most of my adult life. Um, but I'm there right now. I'm enjoying lockdown here. And when I say enjoying, I say that um, <laughs> in a conservative way. <laughs> but yeah, I'm there. And I've been here for the last year and a half. I'm loving it. Well, I'm wearing my, uh, my bow tie and I have the uh, picture behind me to celebrate you today. Well, thank you very much because that's actually where I was born. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. <laughs> well, I'm excited. So what, what do you have to show us? Well, I've picked a few photographs. Um, actually, I've been out and actually taken some of them for you. Okay. So they're kind of original, but I've mixed them up with things that are to do with my kind of own personal life, um, which might be a bit boring for some people, uh, but um, it kind of excites me. My mom and my dad were both painters. And, and so I've stepped a few pictures of my mother's in because they're kind of um, of Jersey and they kind of say something. So the, it's really my own personal memories and places in the island that I love most that I'd really like to share with people together with maybe a few little pills of history. To do, you know, let's, I'd like you all to familiarize with the place and maybe know something and be stimulated by um, a few little curiosities that might make you want to visit it. I love it. So let's go to Jersey. Okay, so what do you want me to do now? Do I share my screen? Yep, go ahead and share. Okay, let's hope this works. Oh, I need to do this. Uh, let me just take this second to get... Okay, there we are. Perfect. So it's my Jersey and the old slogan of Jersey when I was a little girl and I was growing up here was that it was Britain's South Sea Island because it was kind of exotic for English people. And I think it can be exotic for a lot of people today because it, it binds together a whole lot of things like history and, and food and geographical position and even art. So I'm gonna start you with Dawn. And the irony is that most people probably have never ever heard of the island of Jersey, at least from at least from the states well they should have done because new jersey is actually named for the island of jersey the island of jersey um and i think the capital of the state of if not the capital at least one of the important cities in, in the state is a place called carteret or carteret i think it's pronounced and that's probably because this is an island which is completely independent of britain even if it's british but um, we have a family which is known as the Seigneurs family and they're called de Carteret or de Carteret. Okay. And the current <clears throat> Seigneur, as he's called over here, because we have this kind of mix with France, being closer to France than to England. But the Seigneur today, his father actually was given the keys to Carteret in, um, in New Jersey because of the fact that we are the origin in name of that big state. So how about that? <laughs> That's incredible. I love it. So we do have a connection. It's just, and I hope that's going to make somebody curious about wanting to come here and maybe I, even I see hope so. <laughs> the home of the first, the first family, as we call them, of Jersey. So anyway, my first slide is um, the dawn because I think that one of the things that Jersey really has with its beauty, its natural beauty, is incredible atmosphere. And do you get some atmosphere from a dawn? I was actually, I took that picture after having had a party at a friend's house, not long before lockdown. <laughs> and actually that little bay below with that little defense tower on it is what I used to almost see from my bedroom window in my last flat. I've kind of since moved on from then. But I wanted to share this particular thing. It's in the Southwest of the island. It's a bay called Portlet. 
and it has that little island within an island. So that's the first slide oh, that I can. How big is the island of Jersey? How long, if you were driving around, is, is there like a ring road or something like that? Oh, there's more than that. We have an enormous network of roads, about 800 kilometers of them. So okay. the island is about nine miles by 12. And okay. it's divided into 12 parishes, which are kind of administrational more than anything. So um, we have these places like this is called St. Brillard's. They're all named after saints. And um, it's, uh, what, what can I say? It's, it's really difficult to kind of um, explain it, but it's a place that you can drive many, many miles without actually going very far. <laughs> But we've got this amazing coastline with all lots of little coves and, and bays and things. So you really do need a car. It's a, it's a great thing to have to go and get to see these, particularly if you're going to spend maybe two, three days doing it. This is one of the places that you would definitely go to because Portlet is, is a most amazingly beautiful beach. You're going to see a picture of it in the, in the sunshine now. There you are. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. So you can see how pretty it is and this tiny little bay. That sand is very, very white near the walls, but where it's, um, where it's bathed by the water, it takes on this pink hue. And that's because Jersey is actually an island that is built on pink granite. And you can see that from this defense tower, the little island where the defense tower is. So actually our local stone is granite, particularly pink granite, though we do have some gray. And our most typical homes are actually built in this, in this stone, which they tell us is full of radon, but we don't seem to have any more <laughs> bad illnesses than anybody else. So. <laughs> You have to walk to get to this um, this beach. You have to walk down 115 steps. Actually, I think it's close to 135 because there are two sections. But I used to do that every now and again when I was living in Portland last year. And uh, not too frequently, though, because I'm a bit old. But <laughs> but even at my age, you can do 138 steps going up and down. <laughs> That's a good workout, too. <laughs> it is. It's better to do it in the winter than the summer. <laughs> And oh, on the beautiful. side of that bay is probably our most popular and famous bay in Jersey, which is called Brillard, St. Brillard and Wayne. They're two beaches divided by that outcrop of rock in the back there. And these are white sands and beautiful blue seas. And if, you, if I tell you that that was a photograph taken in winter, that's why you get this very cold turquoise color. It's much more like a kind of sapphire blue in the summer. Okay. Now, Jersey is not all beaches, though our beaches are absolutely beautiful. Jersey is a, a, an island that had a great strategic importance. Okay. The, uh, what, what do you call them? The Revolutionary Wars, the Civil yeah. Wars, in France and um, America were um, fighting against Britain, basically. So the last battle in Jersey, mm -hmm. 1781, that, was, um, that contended the islands and their ownership, and from 1781, we've always been English, but before that, there were constant battles between France and England for these islands. So we are bastions of um, defense and war and stuff like that. So in the Second World War, would you believe that these islands, there are five islands in the, in the group, were all occupied by the Germans. And when they occupied in 1940, Mr. Hitler told the world that he had taken British soil. He forgot uh -huh. to mention was only the little islands but okay. for five years by the Germans and that was a very interesting time so we have these amazing defense towers and castles and things in Jersey which testify to this history of the island. Was your, was, was, uh, your family there during that time? Actually they weren't because my family comes from London so actually they, they, they came after. six to the island and okay. uh, so, which is why I was you know a wee babe when I got there, basically. Yeah. I didn't know if your parents had been there or not. But. No, no, no. My father came to Jersey because he was offered a job there and he, it was quite difficult to get jobs in London in his field of training. He was an engineer um, at that time, so a heating engineer. So he came to Jersey because they offered him a great job because it had a house going with it. And so that's how we got here. <laughs> that's a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And this is a picture by my mother. I've just, I've put a few slides in with pictures by my mother. She was this quite amazing You're painter. Talented artist. She didn't just do um, landscapes and things. She also did portrait and even sculpture. But this is one that she did of the local main square in our little town, which is called St. Helier, 
the capital city of um, Jersey, where about 18,000 people live today, I guess. Uh, we've got 110 to 115,000 people living in the island. So even though it's, you know, 12 by nine, we're quite um, overpopulated, really. I was going to say, that's a third Man. of what Iceland has. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> and right. you're a fraction of the, uh, the size. That's absolutely right. So anyway, we don't have a very pretty town, but we do have a very, very pretty main square. And the, as you can see, there's a building in the background that you can just see behind, beyond the trees. And that is the local parliament of Jersey, the local courtroom. And if anybody was to come to Jersey and I were here and I could take them, I would do my very utmost to get them in there because there's some great artwork on the, on the walls there, which I would really enjoy explaining to them. Your mom is a very talented artist. I love the movement and I love the sense of light in this picture. Absolutely. My mother was a frustrated impressionist. <laughs> it, it, she looks like that's how she, what, how she was inspired and it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, she was a very, very talented lady. She didn't leave any for me, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> She, I'm, she kept I'm all the talent pictures. for herself. Yeah, she sure did. I was, I'm afraid I was talented in languages, not in, um, not in art. So I might take it up, you just never know. <laughs> Getting back to some of our history, that's one of our main castles on the island. It's called Gory Castle hmm. and it looks towards France. So it's on the northeastern side of the island. And it's literally five minutes from where I am right now. And I took this photograph last week when I was walking along the beach. We're allowed to do that in lockdown here. Um, and I just thought it would be interesting to show you this, to show you what the castles that defended the island hundreds of years ago actually looked like. But the little pointy bits at the top of that castle are actually nothing to do with the 14th century basis of that tower. They're actually from the German army in the occupation. So they, they took over the whole island and they, they fortified it. There's a lot of interesting history books about that period. It's a five year period of very, very grim history. I have a friend who's actually writing a book about it now. Interesting. So there you go. There's the, the close up of that picture and below it, this beautiful little fisherman's village. Do you know what the title of that book is going to be? Um, not at the moment. It's going to be one of those, um, it's going to be a rather erudite thing and it's going to be a study of agriculture during the, the occupation and how the administration, the German administration interacted with local island administration and all the rather grim human tales around that. It's going to be an interesting academic work. Okay. I'll let you know when it comes out though. He's still on about chapter five at the moment. Okay. <laughs> So as you can see, the, the little round towers at the top are actually German. They're what we used to call pillboxes because they have that sort of round bit going up and then you have the bit where the guns are in the top, which looks like thin air. And then there's a kind of disc on top of that. So we used to call those pillboxes. Some, they do look a bit like pillboxes, I suppose. Anyway, there's a very, very pretty little village there today and all those little boats in the water. And of course you do know about the tides in Jersey, do you? No, We're opposite Mont Saint Michel in France, ah, which has okay. the highest and lowest tides in Europe. So, of course, we benefit from those ourselves. Whether we benefit all the time, I don't know. We get some very spectacular storms in the winter, but high, our highest tides are well over ten meters, and our lowest ones go. I mean, if you if you're walking so how out, how do you deal with that? I mean, how does that affect things there? It can affect our tourists when they don't realize how fast it comes in, the water, when it's out, because it might leave you almost a mile of sand in some areas. But if you, if you don't know how fast the, the sea comes up, you can get cut off. So on occasion, we have to send our lifeboats out to rather over-aggressive over walkers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they get cut off on rocks and things. And we have to go out and get them. It can be quite dramatic. <laughs> well, how does that even affect something like this, where you have all the boats there? Oh, the boats. Now, that's an interesting point. All of our boats, um, because obviously the water leaves them high and dry, have to have stilts. So they have the kind of two stilts on each side, if they're particularly sailboats, because obviously they have a keel as well. So they kind of stand up on these little legs, whereas the ones that are flat bottomed, the motorboats, they just sort of rest on the sand and, and go sideways. <laughs> Wow, that's it's fascinating. very interesting to see. The first time, it's quite a surprise. <laughs> that's interesting. 
So, and this is one of those defense towers because, you know, the English and the French, you know, they were always trying to land and then get to our town and, and, and sort of take over. So all around the island, we've got these, these Martello towers, that's what they're called. And I've, for donkey's years, I've wondered why Martello, because Martello in Italian means hammer. And I guess if you look at the shape of them, they look a bit like a hammer. But I did a little research last night on that for the first time because I never, I never. <laughs> I'm glad that I could give you occasion to <laughs> do that. That's the truth. But I was last <laughs> night. So I discovered, A, that these Martello Towers started being built after that last battle, which was called the Battle of Jersey in 1781. And they planned to have 30 around the island, but they didn't actually ever get to complete them all. But they weren't called Martello Towers at all. They were called um, Maltella Towers because there was a battle between the French and it was near somewhere in Italy. So it was called Torre di Mortella and the English remembered it wrong and wrote it down, wrote it down as Martello and they've been called Martello Towers ever since. So that sounds about right. That sounds about what we would do. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't it just? <laughs> so anyway, they built quite a number, about 11 or 12 of these towers during the 18th and 19th centuries. And these are what we have left now. Some of them have been bought by private individuals and turned into homes. Very difficult to furnish, I would imagine, with those round walls. Oh, really? Remain and are painted in red and white um, so that they've become kind of lookout places for people sailing and things. They, they almost remind me of lighthouses. They're very similar. In fact, we have we have some very interesting lighthouses. <laughs> Did you know I was I going to- I didn't know that was coming. No, seriously. <laughs> For anyone that's watching, I have no clue what pictures are coming, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is our big light. This is our really, really famous lighthouse. It's called Corbiere. And I took this picture last January, I think it was when the seas were pretty rough. Whenever we have a storm, I like to take the car out west because from there, there is nothing between us and America. Hmm. It's looking completely out west, but you get some spectacular seas there. And there used to be a lighthouse keeper who lived in that. Now it's all mechanical or electric or something. Okay. But it's very spectacular. And when the tide is low, you can actually get out there by foot. That's what I was gonna. I was ask gonna ask because I see a road there that goes yeah. right into the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So that's and I have to say that the most spectacular sunsets are to be seen there. Oh, I bet. When people come to Jersey, they have to go to the West one evening and just sit. There's a special pub that even local people go to to sit and watch the the sunsets. They're amazing. It's it's such a beautiful island. It really is. Talk about dramatic. Another picture by my mother, and it's a local garden, and I chose this one because gardens in Jersey are very important. Everybody loves their horticulture in the same way as they love their agriculture because we have an awful lot of very, very good crops that come from Jersey. Some are world famous. I don't know, have you ever heard of Jersey Royals? No. Jersey Royals are new potatoes. Okay. And they are a special kind of um, new potato. They're just there. The first ones are out now. And they're about that big, you know, sort of uh, not much bigger than a, a two euro piece. You see what I mean? When they're really, really good. And they're, if, they're, if they're grown using our local seaweed and stuff like that as fertilizer, then they have a most amazing flavor. We have lots of other things too. We grow flowers. We grow lots of daffodils in the springtime. In the winter, we grow cauliflowers and potatoes. We have a massive, and we have Jersey cows, but I've got a little bit more on that later. This is uh, basically a garden, and my yeah, mother painted that, that one. It's surprising and, and amazing to me because so many islands that are, again, that are bigger, have to import so much because they can't grow it, ironically. So it's interesting that you have so many gardens and, and livestock. Well, actually, the irony, that I think there's a little irony there as well. We actually export probably far more than we actually eat of our own stuff. Really? Because, uh, our things are very desirable, so they get sent away. And we, have, we often import stuff from other places, which is crazy to me, but that's the way the world does it. I mean, we, we are famous for... The milk that, are produced by that is produced by Jersey cows produces the richest, 
They produce the richest milk in the world. If you take a Jersey cow out of Jersey, it will still produce milk, which is richer than any other milk. Mm. But it won't be as rich as when it's in the island itself. We don't know what it is. Nobody knows. Even the special herd specialists don't know what it is about Jersey that makes them so special, that makes the milk produced here so special. That's really and interesting. Brilliant for making cheese. I mean, we do, we do produce some very, very good cheddar, which is cave aged and stuff like that. But our forte is butter and cream. So, you know, those are things that if you visit the island, you, you, you have to try. If you have to. <laughs> if, if you have to. <laughs> Sounds delicious. Now, do you know what that is, Jason? That looks like a uh, mill. You're right. It is. It's a cider press because we had a lot of apples growing in Jersey when it was just a rural community before, before the Second World War, basically. So we're, so not, doing, we're not doing meat or we're, we're not doing wheat or olives in this. We're doing apples? We're doing apples. We're doing apples. The Jersey people enjoy a bit of alcohol. <clears throat> so they, they, they get their apples in there and they crush them and they get all the apple juice out and then they ferment it. And they don't just make cider. They even make apple brandy with it. Ooh. That sounds pretty good. Um, amazing traditions there. We also make something called black butter, which has no butter in it at all, I understand. It's mostly sugar and apples and brandy and stuff. And that is another thing that is a Jersey, is a Jersey product. Um, there's a special farm in Jersey where they make it at the right time of year, which is the autumn, and, and produce it and bottle it and then sell it. And that's a good experience for people when they're traveling to the island. So this is very close to my home. So I was able to take a little walk the other day and, and photograph it. The cider presses in the island were very much in demand in the 1970s. <coughs> um, but now they're generally features in people's gardens like this one. <coughs> this hasn't seen an apple for hundreds of years. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, it looks like hundreds of years anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so are they, so what is this? <laughs> That's what I just said. Do you know what that is? <laughs> no, um, I see some asparagus. It looks like it's uh, it looks like it's a farm stand. So someone is selling something. You put some money in the the blue. Uh, Absolutely. Kind of honor, Absolutely. You know, that honor is bar. local local Jersey asparagus. As you so very well, you saw that really well. You must have a big screen there. Yeah. Um, is that what's also in the in the brown paper bags? <laughs> Jersey Royals, our potatoes. They were the tiny, tiny potatoes. There's enough for two people in that little bag. And all around the island, when you go through the lanes, you'll see these boxes. It depends on the time of year what they're selling. It could be flowers, it could be vegetables, but it's all local produce. And right now, I think they're coming into their own because people don't want to go into shops so much. So they're very happy to go there and get their vegetables. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah it does never, make sense. there's never so much demand. That's right. And, and those are Jersey cows. They're very young. They're heifers. They're beautiful. Cows, obviously, because uh, they would be. They're cows. But as you can see, the characteristic of the Jersey is its color. It's a, it's a golden kind of color. And they have these beautiful soft eyes. And they are very, very curious. So can you see the one at the back is running towards these two here? <laughs> yeah. When I went to take this photograph, <laughs> I suddenly had a whole field of cows running towards me. <laughs> <laughs> one or two is one thing, but then when you have a whole bunch of them coming at you, that's a little nerve wracking. <laughs> but they are so beautiful. They are so friendly. And these are the young ladies that produce all that milk to make the, um, make the, the milk to make the cream and to make the cheese. And I have to say that there are some who, you know, there are breeding uh, farms for meat as well. So we also have some very, very good local meat. And whereas once upon a time it was all cows in the island, now we're getting more goats and sheep and we're creating a lot of biodiversity again in the island because intensive farming was stamping that out. So I'm very, very happy to say it's an interesting place now from this point of view. Mm. That's fascinating. I, I, I make I'm me <laughs> give them a big hug. They just look just fuzzy, soft. This is kind of, you know, under the, 
spreading chestnut tree and all that sort of thing. This I wanted to put this one in because I talked to you a moment back about parishes. We've got the island is divided into 12 parishes, which are basically headed up by a church. Each parish has a church. Okay. But there are um, administrative divisions now, not so much religious ones. But this is one of our 12 parish churches, and it's literally opposite my house here. And I live next to the graveyard, which you can see, which I actually find very tranquil and very nice. And of course, there's some interesting stuff in there, some interesting people buried there and some interesting stories to be told around those gravestones. Very picturesque. I thought you might be interested in seeing that too. Absolutely. That is the last picture that I've put in by my mother, and that was the garden that my family lived in, and that's my father sitting out there in his chair reading a book, which is something he did very, very frequently, and is a very important picture for me, as you can imagine, as I have neither of my parents anymore, sadly. <laughs> I, can just, I, can, I can just picture her sitting out there and painting this, and just a snapshot of... Uh of life growing up and well i think it kind of tells you as well you know how important the garden is to us and i think never like today i think so many people who might be listening to us one day talk about jersey might say to themselves well you know i have to be so grateful for having a garden during this time that we're living at the moment it's bringing people together but if you haven't got a garden it's very very difficult to enjoy what's outside at the moment so gardens i think are absolutely amazing and of course now it's spring so they're really beginning to look extraordinarily beautiful too do you like working on your garden <laughs> do you have a garden jason we have um a little bit of one we have we actually are blessed we have some woods out back which is really nice we we like that a lot ah. we have <clears throat> not a not a well we have a little bit of uh trees planted on the side we've actually turned it into a little bit of a japanese garden oh a that's years, lovely uh, a couple years ago i was in uh japan and tokyo and um uh, kyoto and my the thing that i really like uh one of the things i really like the most is we have this beautiful red weeping um japanese uh red maple japanese okay. red oh maple. that's beautiful and then under that, we actually have a hand-carved granite lantern that we had uh, imported from Japan when we were there. We we bought it at one of the uh, their their garden center essentially, and um, wow. and had them ship it over. And so that that's a that's something that's wonderful to be able to sit out there and just see all that and um, breathe in the the fresh air and think about and live the memories. Memories. That's right. That's fabulous. Wow. Well, there once again is that little village below that castle. And that is a boat that I thought you might find interesting because it is actually a fishing boat. And, you know, there is some amazing fishing around this island. So anybody coming here is always going to enjoy a lot of seafood. I mean, we can beat a Maine lobster, you know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll have to come and try it. Oh, my dear, you are invited whenever you want to. It would be a great pleasure for me to take you to see all of these things, including our oyster beds. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds good. So, <laughs> so this, is my, this is my final slide. We started with dawn, and this time I decided it was time to put in uh, a couple of sunsets. So, right. Because it's an island of immense atmosphere, it really is. That, is, that is my... My little walk through Jersey with you today. I hope it's, I hope it's been interesting, and I hope maybe you can ask me something, and I can give you a bit more information. <laughs> Francesca, it was really, really lovely. I remember, um, you know, so last time Francesca and I were together, we were actually in Italy, and uh, we we just had a lovely time together. And she was, uh, I didn't know at the time that she was living in Jersey and grew up there, and. Um, so that's where this conversation started was a couple months ago. And uh, yeah, that's right. thank you for, for sharing. It's, um, it looks like a, absolutely a lovely place. It looks like a great place to live, great place to grow up. And um, it, uh, it is, Jason. And, you know, I would like to welcome anybody to this island and, and even take them to see some of the things that I love about it so much.
and introduce you to a few of the local people because there's some very interesting people here. That's that's what all of this is about, right? At the end of the yeah. day, it's about friendships and relationships. And that's one of my favorite things about travel is connecting people. Um, it's, uh, you know, you can be yes. in these beautiful locations and that that's important. And it's wonderful to see the sunset on a different island or on a different place in the world. But when you can do it with someone, with a new friend and with old friends, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to beat. It's something. It's a privilege. It really is. We Thank are very you much, Francesca. I appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. Have a great day.